Barakallah feekum. So the brother is asking what are the most important things someone who gives da'wah that must be known so his da'wah can reach old men and old women, right? I don't know why old men or old women. Why not young men and young women? Da'wah is da'wah. It doesn't matter about how old you are. So when you give da'wah, you're actually teaching the Islam. So the first and most important thing to understand in giving da'wah is what you are calling people to. What do you mean? Some people focus on fiqh, halal, haram. You have to pray like this, you have to do like this. Some people focus on tazkiyah. You have to have sabr, taqwa, iman, ihsan. Some people focus on issues of aqidah. And by aqidah, we are referring to different sects and cults. Oh, this cult is khawarij, this is murji'ah. This is uh, this, this is this, this is this. But this is not aqidah. This is studying cults and sects. So what should we be focusing upon? Number one, when the Prophet والسلام, was in Mecca, he stayed in Mecca for 13 years, correct? There was no fasting of Ramadan. There was no zakat. There was no hajj or umrah. Salat was introduced only in the last one or two years. For 11 years almost, no salat. So what was the Prophet doing, alayhi salatu wasalam? 10, 11 years, what was he doing? He was teaching people iman. What is Iman? Every time I ask people, what are the five pillars of Islam? MashaAllah, everybody, Shahada, Salat, Fasting, Zakat, Hajj. MashaAllah. But when I ask them about the six pillars of Iman, they stumble. I said, hmm? Six pillars? I thought there was five on them. I said, no, no, there is another six pillars of Iman. They don't know. And this is the most important thing you should teach yourself and your children and your brothers. And tu'mina billah, to believe in Allah. The day of judgment, the angels, the messengers, the scriptures, the books, and in Al-Qadr, whether good or bad. Now, the vast majority of Muslims don't know these pillars. And those who know them, when you say to them to believe in Allah, what does that entail? That Allah is existing. No, that's easy. Everybody knows Allah is existing. To believe in Allah means that you believe in His beautiful names and attributes. Look at beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal. If I ask you, what is the meaning of Al-Razzaq? I don't know. Al-Muqeet? I don't know. Al-Mateen? I don't know. Okay, what do you know? Allah. MashaAllah. This is a problem. 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jal, and you don't know Him. So when you pray Allahu Akbar, who are you praying to? Allah. What do you know about Him? Nothing. Nothing. Which means that there is a deficiency. When you raise your hands to make dua, you don't find full 100% dependence and reliance and trust on Allah. And this is one aspect. 
And this is why we have problems with our sins. We can't get rid of our sins because we don't know Allah. Allah is watching us. Allah is listening to us, but we don't acknowledge that. To believe in the day of judgment. Of course, to, to, to believe in Allah entails Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat I will take six hours to explain this. They don't have time. So to believe in the day of judgment, what does this entail? What will happen before death? The signs of the day of judgment, major and minor. Also, what will happen after death? How the angels will take your soul? What will happen in your grave? How long you will stay there? What will happen on the day of judgment when you are resurrected from the grave? Yawmul ba'thi wa nushur. Then how you will be held accountable in a day that is 50,000 years long. And how you have to pass over As-Sirat, which is a bridge on top of hellfire. And who will survive? And what will happen when you come to Al-Hawd, Al-Kawthar? What will happen when you come to the Al-Antara? And how is the scale going to weigh your, your records, your deeds? Everything is in a, the day of judgment. And the angels, how many are there? What are their names? What are their duties? Then you come to the prophets and messengers, then the scriptures, then the Qadr. This was what the prophet was teaching the people in Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why they had the strongest Iman, the strongest belief. When wars took place, they did not run away. They remained standing and defending because they had the conviction. We don't have this Iman. If we're praying now in Fajr, in this masjid, and we are very khushur, and the Imam's voice very nice. And one cat, one pussy cat, comes in between the legs. What will happen to the worshippers? Jumping in, afraid. Why? No trust in Allah. And even worse, if you see a cockroach coming, the Imam himself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We have a problem. We don't know Allah Azza wa Jal. That is why we can't find the sweetness of salah, of ibadah. So this is what you should be teaching the shaykh, the shaykh wal ajuz, and you teach, should be teaching the children and everybody. Once you do this, inshallah, your da'wah will be very uh, uh, effective.